Good afternoon. Um, one of these things is not like the others. Um, but I'm hopeful that my advertising background and my tendency to walk around a little bit will hopefully teach you some things. Um, when it was first announced that this uh, occasion was going to happen, um, unsolicited feedback came pouring into my inbox. Um, and it was all incredibly useful for me, actually. So this one, um, I probably won't quote it directly, but can you imagine anything more boring than a bunch of bankers standing around talking about how awesome they are? Um, gave me a particular cause for pause. Um, and so I thought to myself, well, if I have 10 minutes, what am I going to do with my 10 minutes? And ultimately, that comes to a point of, um, I'm not convinced that telling you how to run a bank brand is the best use of your time. Um, and I'm not convinced that learnings are immediately transferable from bank to bank or banks to other industries. So um, while I was doing some research, because I've been very thorough about this, um, I remembered a story about a guy called um, Ron Johnson. And it sounds like a little bit of a porn name, but Ron Johnson. Um, <laughs> It does, it does actually. Um, he was um, one of the directors of the retail experience of the Apple stores. He was basically the guy that was considered the architect of the Apple retail experience. Um, and he went to JCPenney. And in the following 16 months, they dropped $4 billion worth of revenue. The share price plummeted, and they basically went pretty close to disaster. Um, now, what he did when he went in, and I'm not criticizing this, is he basically applied his Apple learnings to a brand that doesn't match. Uh, so what I'm going to try to do for you is I'm actually going to try to give you some things that hopefully, uh, when you walk into your businesses tomorrow, uh, you can apply just three simple things. And I'm going to try to illustrate that with my experience, but the principles are what matters. Yeah. Um, if you work at an agency, by the end of this, you might love me. If you work uh, in product, by the end of this, you might hate me. But hopefully, everyone will get something out of it. Um, but first of all, I just want to start with a utopian world, right? So this is my view of a utopian world and where every business is, succeeds and rainbows and unicorns and lollipops are everywhere and there's like an unlimited supply of candy, right? So in the middle of this, you have your customer. Your customer's at the middle. Around that, you have all the things that your customer cares about, the things that you can convince your customer to care about because let's not forget that we can change people's perceptions. Uh, around that, you build your products and services, and you know that people cared about them, so you know that your products and services are going to work for them. Uh, my view of branding, my view of marketing and where that fits, is it's actually the thin veneer that sits around everything else that's fundamentally more important. Uh, but now this is banking on brands, right? So what I have to do is I actually have to break it out and start answering the brief that I was given. So let's look at each of those things one at a time and how the banks are doing. Um, so Brandon Markons. Um, Awareness is consistently high, right? So um, we can talk about consistency, absolutely. Uh, we, uh, not to spruik what we did, but we launched a new brand, completely different look and feel. Um, our awareness on some of our ads is as high as 84%, um, 54 to 60% attribution. That's a phenomenal score for us. We used to peak at about 25%, and it was nothing like anything else we did. But awareness is consistently high, and that's across all the banks. All the banks are consistently high. Um, the attribution, as I say, is positive. Um, creative measures are mostly benchmarks. I'm not going to lie and say that everything knocks it out of the park, but they're mostly benchmarks. Um, and that's reflected in the fact that these things are winning lots of awards, getting lots of recognition around the place. Um, the creative quality, look, this is subjective, but it's pretty bloody good, to be fair. Um, and so I summed it up. Kind of gave myself a pat on the back after I wrote a few bullet points and went, I'm doing a pretty bloody good job. And in fact, everything that I'm working with is doing a Pretty bloody good job. Well, everyone, sorry, everything that didn't come, across, come out, right? Um, doing a pretty good job. So principle number one, how do I think that we got to a point of doing a good job? This is where the agencies uh, might love me. Um, actually, we started fighting about the work and stopped arguing about the process. So we try to have a discipline uh, at Westpac of we try to define the business problem incredibly clearly. We hand that to our agency, and we give them all the tools that they need to solve that problem for us. And we get out of the way as much as we can. We almost had a fist fight over flatties, by the way. Um, someone from DDB literally got up and was ready to punch someone else. But we made it, and it's the best ad we've ever made. So principle number one, um, give your partners the tools you need to do their job, and don't try to do, them, do it for them. Principle one. Uh, now let's look across at products and services, which, to be honest, I profess to know less about. I would argue that I meddle in them all the time, but I profess to know less about. Um, so strong balance sheet performance across all the banks. We've all just done our annual results. They're all looking pretty good. Um, and we're all growing. 
uh, the risk management is great. The online services, by the way, banks have traditionally looked at as products. Our speed of innovation and our time to market is better than it's ever been. Our ability to deliver a product to our customers is absolutely better than it has ever been. Um, so that's our fastest speed to market. So I look across at our product friends, and if there's anyone from product here, I say to you, you also are doing a great job. So this is brilliant, right? This is brilliant. But the challenge we've got is that I refer to it a little bit as innovation by multiplication. Now, innovation by multiplication is where you take one incredibly complex product that barely anybody understands, you combine it with another complex product that barely anybody understands, and you create something that nobody has a shit show in hell of understanding, let alone communicating. So my second principle to deliver to you is, even if you are designing something that you are going to give away free, you must ask the question of what would a customer pay for it. Doesn't matter if you give it away free, you have to determine what the value of that product is going to be, and if the answer is they would not pay for it, accept it's worthless, and walk away, and don't launch the product. Uh, if it's a good result, by all means, make it free, make a killing, and congratulations. So that's my second principle. Um, now, I just want to look back to where I started with the first one of those circles, uh, which was the customer. And let's talk about the customer metrics, because we know the advertisers are doing well, and we know the product people are doing well. So my question to you is, why is it that consideration for banks really moves between different banks? Why is it that preference is an incredibly difficult metric to move? Why is it that actually, um, if you look at the correlation between those two metrics and switching, you don't see much? And why is it that, uh, and no discredit to what ANZ did, uh, why is it that you can close an entire bank brand and you don't have too much of a switching uh, gain if you're the other banks, even if you spent? Um, now, that shouldn't happen, right? So what that means is that we are definitely not concentric when you look at all those things together. So if this clicks for me, the customer cares about the same things the customer has cared about for about the last 20 years with the addition of one. So you had the reference that service is the most important thing. They don't want the bank to go bankrupt. They want to know that their money is going to be safe in that bank. They want to know that you can move it around really, really well uh, and you won't have any problems. They expect good value. The only thing that's actually new in that list and is incredibly important, and don't mistake me, it's incredibly important, is your online services, right? So what they want hasn't changed. We've known it for a long time. Um, and so now I'm going to show you what I think the issue is. I'm going to show you why I think that this response to how well are the banks differentiated from each other, is, I don't think it's going to be a five. So there's the customer, right at the center of everything where it should be. Uh, now let me overlay where Brandon Markoms is. So we had an awful lot of amazing advertising that I'm not convinced customers really give a shit about, to be fair. And then if I overlay products and services, um, I have a number of products, both from myself and competitors, where I know download rates on apps, and they're not spectacular. Because we built it because we could, not because it really mattered to a customer. Right? And so now, uh, am I all right for time? No, I've just got the wave. That's perfect. This thing times out at 8.35, but I thought it would take longer. Um, so we're all so busy being so spectacular that we've actually missed the fact that we're being spe spectacular in different directions and not the one direction that really matters, which is to the customer. So the three principles. Use your partners as partners. If you're a marketer, not a copywriter, be a marketer, not a copywriter. Use your partners to the best effect. Principle one. Principle two. Assess the value of your new products and services to customers to determine whether it's worth progressing. Don't do things because you can. Do things because they will be valuable to people. And the third one, which I haven't hit on yet, but this is the most important one, is everyone in this room tomorrow, go in and be the voice of your customer. Be loud about it. So whoever's, uh, if you're not in marketing or you're a junior marketer, go into the office tomorrow, and if people tell you that you just process invoices and you just do the spreadsheet, tell them to bugger off. Be the voice of the customer and be loud about it. And the funny thing is, you will find that by rubbing a few people up the wrong way for the customer, you'll get promoted. And then, in your next role, when you're actually working with the agencies, it's true. If I work in banking in a senior role, right, from rubbing people up the wrong way, I suspect. In your next role, when you're working with the agencies and you give them the tools that they need, and they come in and you love a script the first time you hear it, and the next day people aren't sure, as a customer, you loved it. 
right? So make sure you stick up for it in that next role. And you know what the funny thing is, is that sticking up for a customer in that next role will get promoted. And eventually, you will reach the top of your business. You may be a CEO, you may be a general manager, and you will have created an organization on your way that is fundamentally centered around the customer. And that is how you can build a brand that you can bank on. Thank you.